What's up, Star Wars fans? We're the Hills Maniacs, and last week we reviewed the first movie in each trilogy of Star Wars. So, in this video, we will talk about the second movie in each trilogy of Star Wars. Here we go. This should be fun. Okay, so obviously the first movie that we will talk about since like last in the last video you know we started with the prequels went into the original trilogy and now mm -hmm. into the the new trilogy so the first one we'll review is attack of the clones this movie should not exist uh it was crap and i didn't find it too bad i mean it still like made sense at least it made more sense than episode eight but i mean if we're to compare these, you know, but I, I think it was like, I don't know if it necessarily needed to introduce the clones because honestly, like, I know they're what sort of creates the idea for like the stormtroopers mm -hmm. later on, but I feel like they could have just had stormtroopers like and didn't need the clones at all in the you know in the original. I mean the, the see the trilogy. the point of the clones. You're right. I mean for the stormtroopers. Because they just take people from the galaxy and train them to be Yeah, I mean, that's to be look at Finn and everything else um, from the But the, the point of the clones, at least, was kind of to show the corruption of Palpatine in the Senate at the time. Because he ordered, well, Dooku, I guess, technically, or Palpatine, depending on who you ask, yeah. uh, ordered the creation of the clone army that way when the time came, he would have enough soldiers to wipe out the entire yeah, race I mean, of Jedi. I, I get that. Uh, I... And and so that's really the only point of the clones, because once all the Jedi were gone at the end of Revenge of the Sith, Palpatine shut down all cloning factories because he didn't need clones anymore. Uh, because he didn't need ones that he could control with a mind chip like they had mm -hmm. in, inside the clones, where you just get stormtroopers that'll fight for you. So, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, the the clones were important and stuff, and like this movie did have a lot of. If you really think about it, this movie did have a lot of important things that reference the future. I mean, if this was like your second ever Star Wars movie that you were seeing, like you saw I mean, Phantom Menace mine. and then you come in and watch it. This is kind of what I started with too. Yeah, it's so seeing second, this, so. like I didn't really, you know, I, I didn't think it was too bad. I mean, it kept going with like the, the story made sense, you know, like Anakin's a bit more grown up now. He's training to be a Jedi, you know, and then, and then he goes insane. Yeah. And then we see later on in episode three, which we'll talk about in our next video, but you know, he, like, gets all mad because they won't let him be a Jedi Master and things like that. So you see, it is a good way of promoting Anakin's, you know, story before he becomes Darth Vader in True. Episode 4. But, like, I just feel some things were bad. I didn't find this as an all-around bad movie, like a lot of people are saying. Like, I don't think it was complete crap. Now, like Episode 8. Comparing it to the rest of the Star Wars saga, it's not the worst. I will say that because that's coming. Jar that's coming next. It still has George well, well, Binks in it. But, uh, uh, yeah, the the oh. the greatest character in in Star Wars history, uh, George R. Binks. Yeah, but you know, like again. like you said, it does it does kind of build Anakin's story a little bit, <clears throat> uh, and it it leads to the what we see in Revenge of the Sith, where mm -hmm. Anakin goes fully to the dark side. You know because. He goes insane when it, when his mother gets killed by the Tusken Raiders, and so he goes out and he kills all of that tribe, if you will, of of Tusken Raiders be, in in revenge, uh, yeah. even if they didn't have anything to do with his mother's death, uh, and that's not the way of the Jedi. So it it started building up that you know that mm -hmm. that there, but having it be the second one I saw, the first time I saw it, you're right. I didn't think it was bad. But mm -hmm. compared to, I mean, you know, once I've seen all nine <coughs> movies, it's, I don't like it. And it, granted, yeah. it did set up one of the greatest television series for Star Wars in the Clone Wars. The Mandalorian? Uh, oh. Well, I mean, technically, oh. with with Boba Fett. But, uh, you know, it, it set up for the Clone Wars, which I really enjoyed that series. Uh, and if you haven't watched that, 
check out the Clone Wars. It's on Disney Plus if you if you haven't seen it. Um, but yeah, so I I don't really like attack. See, the I think the only thing they could have done better was like maybe if the clones were meant to be a bigger deal, like they were. I mean, we know what they do like later on in episode three. But if this is supposed to be the introduction of the clones, I feel like they could have done more with that. Like, cause we don't really see. There's only a, we don't really see the clones actually fight until like the end of the movie, right? Like in that big battle. On Geonosis. On Geonosis, yep. yeah. I mean, so we don't even really see the clones until the end of the movie. We only get two really, basically one and a half movies with the clones before they turn bad and everything anyways. Unless you count the clones. And then from there they just fizzle away into become, you know, everyone becomes stormtroopers at that point. It's almost like what was the point? But other than that, I mean, I didn't think the movie was too bad. It's not the best one of these three like sequel movies, but it's not. And I mean, of the of the of the prequels, uh, it's it's my least favorite. Of, I think of it had the one, two, and three. I mean, I'm gonna say it was better than Phantom Menace because <laughs> I think it had more going for it. Like more stuff happened in this movie compared to the Phantom Menace, to, in my opinion. I really enjoyed Phantom Menace, and, you know, watch our review on that. In the, I, in the I did, too. Video, I just but, didn't think... Um, it, it, I, I think this one was better. That I would take Phantom Menace over this. But uh, let's move on to Episode 5, my favorite of the entire saga of Star Wars, uh, Empire Strikes Back. Just a well-directed movie. Uh, the scenes are great you know i just i love everything about this movie i'm not gonna say anything bad about empire because it is it is the the best movie in the franchise the only uh, <clears throat> agree to disagree or not well no i i think it was a good movie too and I, I honestly think like the original trilogy like we pretty much in a way you almost don't need any other star wars movies honestly much, they could have just yeah. made you know, like the the original trilogy, and then several years later, however long it was after um, when Episode One came out and stuff, they could have just instead made right. TV shows or made these individual movies that we've been seeing. You know, like Solo and uh, Rogue One and everything else. Like just made that instead of making a whole new trilogy of you know whatever. But the only thing I would say about this movie, honestly, is that I didn't get as big of a moment from it. Like when vader reveals to luke that he is his father because like going into this i already knew from what you told me you know like because you got me into star wars and things like that so i already knew that anakin or that darth vader was luke's father so it wasn't as impactful to me but if i had seen that originally i feel like that would have been spot on that's not saying the movie's bad or anything that's just my opinion like i feel like i would have had more of a connection to that moment like holy crap you know that's like the Captain America catching Mjolnir thing in Avengers Endgame. Like, nobody expected that it came out of nowhere. I, well, I, I mean, mean I heck, they... James Earl Jones didn't even know it was coming until he <laughs> yeah. recorded his lines. So. I mean, I, I don't think there was anything wrong with this movie. and it, it was a good setup. It, all around good movie, just like the other two, A New Hope and Episode Six, were both, you know, yes. per, uh, perfect uh, Attack of the Clones for what they were. Attack of the Clones <laughs> and uh, the, uh, the Trash Jedi. Uh, they they need to to take notes from Empire Strikes Back yeah. because it, it is one of and not just in Star Wars, just it in is general. it is one yeah. of my favorite movies of all time. Like just Empire Strikes Back. I mean, I love Star Wars mm -hmm. and everything about it. But if you if you ask me anything about Star Wars, I'm probably going to tell you something from Empire Strikes Back. Uh, because that is, it's, first off, it's the one I remember the most about, because I've seen it more than any other Star Wars movie, and like I said before, it's just well directed, uh, just the acting is great, the, the camera views and stuff, everything was just great and about actually, this And movie. I think it actually did good, like, picking up on where things left off in episode four, like, where you look at the pre, or the sequel trilogy, and it's just like a hot mess, pretty much, because... Right. You know, you had episode 7, which was fine, and then episode 8 completely, like, throws that out the window. And, and then episode 9 has to try and piece all the mess up back together. But yeah. episode, I mean, 
in terms of episode five, like it did good of connecting what happened in episode four. You continued straight on with Luke's story. Then you get the, you know, you have the vil. We know who the villains are and the bad guys. We know who the good guys are. And then you right. get the reveal that one of the bad guys is Luke's father. You know, so it's like, <clears throat> and then it kind of makes you question, like, or makes Luke question, I guess, was Ben Kenobi lying to him? You know, because he told him that his father was fought with him in the Clone Wars and, and ended up and turning, died. or Darth Vader killed him. Which I mean, technically, technically he did, yeah, he did. but. Then you get that whole reveal. So it is a shocking moment. It's just like, uh, yeah, I don't think this movie, nothing wrong with this movie whatsoever. I mean, and and on top of all of that, you get Luke training with Yoda. Yeah. You know, you get Luke versus Vader for the first time where he reveals Mm -hmm. about his, you know, him being his father. You get the, the entire sequence on Cloud City with Lando and... Uh, you know, where R2 and 3PO are just great, and you get introduced to adult Boba Fett, who, until, the, you know, Attack of the Clones, we really didn't know who Boba Fett was. Yeah, like if uh, you had and seen, then, yeah, exactly. And, and now, you know, with Boba Fett being back in The Mandalorian and having his own spinoff series, uh, you know, it's just, it's... It's one of those things that, like, it, it made a character, and for the, the minimal amount of time that we saw Boba Fett in that movie, like, actually, you know, saw Boba Fett, uh, mm-hmm. it was, it it just, it, he was one of those characters, kind of like Vader for the first time, you know, when he comes like, walking oh, onto the Tonti yeah. 4 in A New Hope, and you're like, wow, this guy is cool, you know, you, you just look at Boba Fett, and you know he's going to be one of those awesome characters and so that's what this movie was really good at doing unlike the next one we're going to talk well, about hold on. i have one more thing to say so. about episode five too it also did good at like leaving us wondering or questioning what's going to happen next with these characters yep. you see luke like he got his arm chopped off and gets rescued by the others han gets frozen in carbonite we don't know, like, how are they going to get him out of that, you know, by Job of the Hut and everything else. So it kind of leaves you, like, what's going to happen next? That's what you want a movie yeah. to do. You know, it's that's, tell, what, that's what good movies tell are supposed to do. Tell a good, consistent story. It opens up pretty much, well, not directly where everything left off from the last one, but it brings back the same characters. You know, it continues on the journey, and then it brings you into what the next movie is, so you'll want to see what the finale, the big grand finale is. That's what right. that's what this movie excelled at. Unlike and that's yeah Star that's Wars that's exactly story. what what a good movie's supposed to do. It's supposed to leave you wanting more. Unlike the the episode eight, the last Jedi, or as I call it, the trash Jedi. Trash Jedi. Um, you know, it, this movie made us want to never watch Star okay. Wars again. Uh, th- this See, movie was just now. I saw it the first time in theaters didn't really have a good time with it got it on on dvd when it came out you fool watched it again still didn't didn't like like it it. Rewatched it again recently liked it a slight bit more than i did but it's still my least favorite in in the franchise consistently there's no like continuity a lot like a lot of the characters lose who they are in this some of them aren't even are barely even in the movie that like some of the characters you've seen from episode seven like you can tell going into this without like usually you don't look at a movie and you're like oh why did the director right. make that decision whereas you're more you're more supposed to think like what is this character doing that doesn't make any sense to what he did in this previous right. film you know but when you can flat out tell that because they had like a different director and stuff it didn't fit well like you could tell they pro- probably didn't know who who did this one well if, if, if you look at it uh yeah ryan johnson you you look at it you know you go from what jj abrams did in the force awakens and the rise of skywalker yeah and, then and you look at what, happened you look at what ryan johnson did in episode eight they killed off snoke who was literally in <laughs> the main who one was and a half movies position to be the main villain of and this just, trilogy just, just so like they palpatine. could bring back yeah. palpatine <laughs> well in i don't even Rise know if that's Skywalker. why he like i'm sure he um, didn't know what jj abram's plan was so he just killed off snoke for no reason. but or, but like know, i said like, uh, kathleen kennedy who's the president of lucasfilm had a lot to do with this and she knew the direction uh jj abrams wanted to go 
because uh, she she allowed it to to go that direction, uh, but <coughs> decided to pull a Vince McMahon and change the script. You know, the day of pretty much. See, and, I didn't uh, think like the movie. W- I mean, it was a bad movie. Don't get me wrong. I just didn't think it was like too bad where it's unwatchable like it did continue some right. things from like it didn't just it wasn't just a completely different movie like here's a bunch of new characters that you weren't introduced right to i mean it had the seven. same characters it still and stuff, continued but... on but you know there were things like you said killing snoke and everything else that just didn't make sense but i didn't find it like if you would take out those parts and like change them or something it would probably be an okay movie like it would, it should have just felt like episode seven, part two, right? Not episode. Let's get rid of this one and go on to episode, the true episode eight, which I guess episode nine wasn't that great either. Yeah, you, know, you you look at you were talking about how it kind of continues off of everything else. You know, the start of the movie was fine. Yeah. Uh, it showed the the resistance fighters trying to bomb a dreadnought, which is basically the mm-hmm. the main ship of the Imperial fleet, uh, and they're usually un, you know, unable to be destroyed, uh, yeah. except with, like, bombs, and nobody could ever get close enough to drop the bombs on it to destroy it. Well, it starts off with that scene, and then, you know, they, they track them through hyperspace, which is something that we've never seen before, so that was, that was neat, that was different. Yeah, I mean, that brought, you know, brings something new to the table. And then they had this whole <laughs> sequence... With Finn and Rose, I guess it was character building for Finn and Rose, but I'd say why? the worst the worst parts of it was changing characters like the where like where they're go their trajectory like where the characters are going. We barely saw like uh, Maz Kanata in this like at all. She wasn't even in this. She was interesting because she had Luke's lightsaber like. They could have, or in, you know, in episode seven. And then she's just there they, they in could Rise have, of Skywalker. Well, she wasn't even really there, I guess, technically. Well, she in, in a, Rise of Skywalker, oh, she Rise was. Oh, Rise of Skywalker. Would, yeah, yeah, that's, right. that's I what thought, I mean. Yeah. And then and she's just there in the she, next She's one, in so the video, like, and, you know, she's basically on Zoom. In, there, uh, there's no continuity, people, yeah. in these And then movies. the other worst thing about this movie is that they made this one a comedy. Yes. Like, straight up, this whole movie is a It was the... Th- yes. See, I'd compare it to Thor Ragnarok, except Thor Ragnarok was good comedy. That whole thing, you know, that that whole sequence with with this ruined Ray and, and Ray and Luke, you know, I get it was it was supposed to build the Luke and Yoda type training scenes from Empire and Return of the Jedi, you know, where the the right. young person is going to the old Jedi Master to get training, uh, and so it kind of mirrors Empire Strikes Back, but then at the same time, Luke wanted nothing to do with it. And then we find out parts of the connection between Rey and Kylo, which ends up being a thing in the next one, question mark? Yeah. Uh, but, I don't know, you this know, ruined where the was story so... was supposed to go, because episode nine then had to, like, connect off of this, right. try to keep everything that happened in this movie consistent... They don't really make any... Re- like, nothing that happened in episode 7 could direct... Like, they couldn't have basically right. ignored episode 8 and be like, oh, Snoke just died, you know, like... So they still had to connect to episode 8 and try to make a half-decent movie off of that, which is right. hard to do. And, so that know, that's, it ruined the, you know, what would have been potentially a pretty good series if they had kept it... Go- right. Like, we get all these new characters in episode 7, you know... They have the connections to the old movies, like with all the like Han Solo and Leia and Luke, Chewbacca, three PO and R two. You know they're all there, and then that make that movie, like we said in the last video, makes you want to go back. If if you saw Episode Seven for, and that's your first yeah, Star Wars, it makes experience, you want to go back and find out. Makes who you want to go back and find out who all these people are. This one, <laughs> this one makes you wish you've never seen Star Wars to begin with. Yes. Uh, but I think my least favorite part of this entire movie. And I have nothing against the fact that they tried to make Leia use the Force uh, in in Star Wars because that's what everybody wanted to see. Yeah. But when the Tie Fighters blow up the bridge on Leia's ship, and all the leaders get sucked out into space, you know they kill off Mon Mothma, they kill off Admiral Ackbar. He should have known it was a trap. It's a trial. Uh, you know, and Leia's out there just floating through space, and then all of a sudden she goes, and she's back on the ship. Like, that's not how the Force works, people. Yeah. 
Like we. I mean, I thought it was interesting. I, but. I I'm glad that we got to see Leia use the Force, but I wish it would have been in a different capacity. You know, like she yeah. could have went up and been the one that killed Snoke or something. You know, as like a final last, last desper yeah. desperation act to save her son. You know, who was Kylo Ren. Uh, you know, or or something, or to save Ray, or you know something, you know, or use the force, like force healing that we'll find out about in Rise of Skywalker, you know, or use use just some kind of force throughout. But that's the only time we see her use the force, other than the Rise of Skywalker, where she talks to to just one of the many things in this movie that didn't really make any sense. And and one more thing before we uh, conclude here, I. Uh, the, another thing is, you know, they, they separated their characters to the extent that they were jumping back and forth Too many so times. much. Because yeah. you had Finn and Rose off on an adventure. You had Poe with Leia and everybody on the ships trying to avoid the Empire. Mm -hmm. uh, you had um, Ray was with Luke, you know, and, and you just kept jumping back and forth through these different characters and that's fine because that's what every Star Wars movie does. Yeah. But they usually, you know, you look back at the originals, you had Leia and Han, you know, off doing their thing while Luke was training with Yoda and it would bounce back and forth between them too. You wouldn't have all these side five, characters five going all stories, over the place. Yeah. Like we said, you know, Star Wars, when you look at the originals, was meant to be that kind of, just like a space movie that had uh, g great characters and made you wanting more and then you get stuff like this and it just makes you as a star wars fan kind of gets you disappointed. who's seen everyone before this it ju it's just disappointing yeah. to see something like this and it had nothing to do with the the director i mean it could have had something to do with ryan johnson uh but the fact that the the script was limited at certain points and they completely changed the the direction of it uh, you know, and then on top of that, they were more focused on building the solo movies that, no pun intended, uh, because that came out after that, uh, solo, a uh, Star Wars story, you know, they were, they were more focused on those than they were the main movies. Uh, and, and that's not something you should be focusing on, mm -hmm. you know, those, those little side movies like that. Okay, so basically, all in all, the best of the sequel movies in each of these three um, Star Wars series is Episode Five, The Phantom Menace. <laughs> no, is Episode Five, The Empire Strikes Back. Um, so, but let us know what you guys think. Did you guys like Attack of the Clones or The Trash Jedi more uh, more than Empire Strikes Back? Let us know that down in the comments section. Uh, and if you're a Star Wars fan, stick around because next Sunday we will be. Reviewing the final three movies in each of the Star Wars trilogies, which would of course be episode three, six, and nine. Yes, and also uh, let us know if you want us to review Solo and Rogue One, or you know, the or, or compare Wars, them or, or something. Or along something. Those yeah, lines. we could compare yeah. those two because they are part of of the Star Wars franchise. I already did a review comparing Rebels, The Mandalorian, and Clone Wars, so you can check that out too. Uh, if that's something you're in interested in, so. There you go, guys. That's what we thought of each of the second movies in the three different Star Wars trilogies. Uh, let us know your thoughts, and we'll see you guys in the next one. May the Force be with, be with you. you. Subscribe! <laughs>